guys welcome back to my channel my name is Sierra if you're new here welcome if you're an old subscriber welcome back and so I put it on my Instagram to ask for questions to be sent about teaching or you could have sent questions about being a teacher or you could have asked questions about teaching life during a pandemic I did get some responses and I wanted to do a question and answer to those questions. Um, so, first of all, if you aren't subscribed to the channel and you end up liking this video at the end, make sure you subscribe and make sure that you like the video so that you guys can see. On my that. channel, it's a little bit of everything. Crafting, cooking, baking, hauls whether it's clothing or grocery, you just never know with me. And I'm a teacher, so I like to sometimes add my teaching videos to this channel. So, no, you never. Let's just jump right into it. Question number one. I got asked, do teachers treat you like they're equal? So to answer that question, at our school, yes. Um, when I first came into the school, I was treated with nothing but open arms, welcomed. I've never had any issues with any of my coworkers. Um, the way we look at it is everybody in that building is a teacher. Regardless of what position you have or which area you're working in, you're a teacher and everybody's treated equally. The way that we look at it is we're one um mr like slogan is one bme we literally keep each other together we greet each other we speak to each other there's like there's no hostility um and this is the one workplace other than the preschool which is you know where i really started teaching at is where i can say that working at an elementary school is totally different from working at a preschool um at the preschool there were plenty of issues um, but that's just because it was more having to deal with uh, closely with the administrator and I don't have to work so closely with my boss other than, you know, like responding to the emails or things that she sends. Um, so yes, everybody treats each other, treats each other equally. We all like each other. We all get along. And if we're not getting along, which has never happened, I'm sure that we're going to sit down talk it out and figure out what to do because um, we have to keep our relationship steady um, for the sake of the children and we want them to see the, the relationships that we are building with each other. Um, question number two, how are you adjusting to the new guidelines the virus put in place within the schools? Um, I'm adjusting very well. Um, a, I'm always wearing my mask. Um, B, I'm always having to tell the kids, pull your mask up, put your mask back on your face. Um, and I really like the guideline that was given to us this year for snack and lunch. If a child is talking, their mask should be on their face. There should, there's no reason why the mask should not be on. Regardless if they're the three to six feet apart, because for kids it's three feet, um, regardless of whatever, they still need to have the mask on. Um, so if they're not talking, they're free to have their mask down, but if they are, they have to have it on. Um, so I'm adjusted very well to the guidelines and I can, I can dig it. At first I was really scared to come back, um, and you know, scared for my kids, but I think at this point, if we've made it two months in so far we can keep going hopefully and just to know that Christmas break is right around the corner. So question number three, what is a typical day like for you? Typical day, okay so a typical day and I'm just gonna briefly run through it. Um, I arrive at work by 7 25, 7 30. I go in, put chairs down, put my bag down, my lunch bag down. I am normally um, getting my breakfast and lunch things situated with the kids um, 
and then I go out and open up car doors for parents at 7 40 to let their kids out eight o'clock I'm back in the classroom taking um lunch order and then I am also after that doing like morning meeting uh which we do a greeting a share and an activity and then we read the morning message um we then get started with literacy we then um work on math and then the kids go outside for recess i don't go outside with them i am delivering lunches during that time so i get like 15 minutes for a break and then the other 15 minutes to deliver um so i deliver to for three first grade classrooms and then three kindergarten classrooms and then um i'm having to sit with the kids for lunch and then we go to specials for 30 minutes and then at 12 i go to lunch and then 12 30 I'm back in the classroom and we're working on math and then of course by one o'clock we're working on content which is social studies for us um, and then I am having to do writing um, and then we do snack closing circle and by 2:20 the kids are going out the door and after work I stay until three so from two 25 until 3 o'clock I'm cleaning the classroom with some grade A hospital brand spick and span um, I wipe the tables down put the chairs up I laminate if I need to I make copies if I need to um, I clean up my area my desk and then um, I put our breakfast and lunch bins back in the cafeteria question number four what are some of the roles that you do as a teacher's assistant exactly what i just said um i make copies laminate if i need to i clean up the room which is just the tables and, and uh, putting up the chairs i change the um lunch chart for the next day um i make sure that um we have snacks for the next day so if i need to walk up front to grab more snacks because um the school is no longer this year providing snacks for us, so we end up having to um, get asked. We have to ask parents and stuff like that to donate in snacks that are already sealed up. Um, so, those are some of the roles that I do. Another huge role is like when she's doing small group time, I walk around and observe the kids doing like math or uh, writing or literacy and um, help them get onto their computers from time to time. And yep, I go, I take them to specials and I stay with them for the first 30 minutes, the second 15 minutes, they have recess, so they, I go to lunch. All right, question number five. Do you have music time? If so, how often and what songs do you play for the kids to sing? Okay, so we don't have music time. <laughs> um, here in the States, um, and I'm saying it like that because I was asked by someone who doesn't live in the United States. So here in the States, um, we don't have music time at um, elementary school. We have music class, but for us at our school this year, um, the kids go to a certain special once a week for five days. So prime example, our, my kids had music last week and they had it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday um, from 11.30 until 12 o'clock. And she does music with them. Um, so we don't do any songs or play any songs for the kids um, ourselves um, just because I guess it's just not the appropriate thing. I don't really see too many teachers at my school um, and at my job playing music for the kids. So we play YouTube calming music, but that's just to help them get through like getting their work done, work completed, stuff like that. So they go to music once a month, five days a week, and it's just for 30 minutes a day. Question number six, what made you choose to become a teacher? I chose to become a teacher because I really enjoyed working with kids. I really enjoy being around kids. Um, and I already had one of my own and just adored being the best mom to him. And so I was like, I wanna be a teacher. And I decided to fill out a job application at a preschool to become a um, 
toddler teacher and I ended up doing that. I was a toddler teacher. Then I went to um, being an infant room teacher and then I ended up being a three-year-old teacher. And that was for about three years. Um, and then that job was closing down. I filled out the application for the job that I have now and I got the job. Um, question number seven, how was your interview when you first got the job? When I first got the job, or when I was interviewing for the job, I was nervous. I didn't know what to say, what to do, X, Y, and Z. I had never worked with special education before. Um, I just know like certain little things from my son having ADHD um, and what they were working with him on. And when he's in the same district, we're all working on the same thing. So I ran with what I knew. Um, I impressed her and she knew that I was, you know, still in school, working towards my elementary education degree um, and offered me the job. When I came in, I was excited and I was just saying, thinking to myself, like, why did she ask me in my interview if a child called you a name, what would you do? <laughs> because once I got in the job and finally got to know the kids, it all came out. <laughs> So question number eight, what procedure is done if a child is disruptive in class? So, okay, everything is just tying into each other. So when a child is disruptive in class, what we're doing this year, because last year the position I was in, which was SPED, um, and I was working on a team called The Best Team. Um, and that would just mean like we were working on zones, you know, telling, I see them what color zone the kids are in whether they were in the green zone, yellow zone, red zone, or blue zone. Certain things meant certain things. So if you were in the blue zone, you were like tired, um, you were bored, sick. If you were in the red zone, that just meant that you are frustrated, angry, upset. Um, if you're in the yellow zone, you might be, um, you know, acting silly. You might be um, just kind of like getting out of hand. And the green zone is where you want to be at. Um, and that is where the kids are happy. They are, um, you know, excited, things like that. So the procedure that's done is just to like, kind of like pull them to the side, have them do like some deep breaths, like a couple of those to get them back into where they need to and just kind of have a conversation. This year we don't have the, behavior um program so we're doing the best that we can and we don't really have as many disruptive kids in our class so when we do we just you know talk and then we try to fix and uh, alleviate the problem to keep it from going number nine what's your favorite subject to teach or observe my favorite subject with the kids is writing um the first day of school when we try to writing activity it didn't work <laughs> um, our kids are fresh out of kindergarten where they were virtual all last year um, unless they sent their kids back for the last two months of school two months of school is not really gonna get these kids the way that they need to so I would have to say writing because we're seeing a total difference from day one and to, to now day whatever it is um, and we've been in school for about working on two months now um, so we're now learning how to sound out our letter sounds and roll with the flow whatever you think you hear write it down so if you think you hear a I you write what you write that way we're teaching you how to write so that is my favorite my favorite subject to observe is math because a lot of kids struggle in math and they think that they don't have it or they think that they can't do it, but they really can once they actually put their mind to it. So I love to observe math class for sure. And question number 10, what do you look forward to when you walk into work in regards to teaching? I look forward to A, seeing the kids come in because I love greeting them and saying good morning to them. And then I also love, um, you know, just like conversations of like if we give a writing prompt of, you know, what is it that you do in the beginning, middle, and end of your day? I just like seeing those type of things. 
um, and when walking into work in regards to teaching, I love knowing like what we're gonna be doing throughout the day. Um, I love being told what certain things that we're gonna be doing so that I know best how to help out. So thanks to you guys who sent me in some questions. I loved answering all of those questions and I really enjoyed doing this question and answer video. If you guys like this video, make sure to give it a huge thumbs up and make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so that you can catch the next video. Bye.